So this year we're changing, doing a major change on software. We're going from what they call version 4 to version 5. Version 5 has some good changes in it. Um, it gets rid of the, the cumbersome um, updating with the ECUs where you have to change profiles and have a bunch of different profiles for doing your CM42, your CM43. It's one touch update. You touch it, it figures out what software it needs to update and then it does it. Um, also detections, we no longer have to unplug everything. We've got these little plugs in the ECUs. They're called smart plugs. They're just an identification plug. There's four different ones. There's a yellow one for a CM43. There's a blue one for liquid NH3 sectional. There's a green one for Topcon blockage. And then there's a red one here. And the red one is for CM42. CM41 has every plug populated, so it already knows that that's the CM41. And EM24-1 is your sectional granular, and it's got two relay plugs and two inputs, so it knows that that one's the right one. So they do not have, but the other four do. Each little plug has a label on it, gives you the part number of that plug, what uh, type of ECU it's plugging into, and which port it plugs into on that ECU. And then it also says what it's for. So it'll say Packmaster, Tank 5, NH3, whatever they are. And it, then it just says what pins they connect into. So they're going to be in the tanks. You would have started seeing them on last year's tanks. They would put them in. So any 9000, if previous to that, can be these plugs can be added. And then they can have the same features with version 5. The other thing with version 5 is they've changed it from jobs to task controller. So now it should work better with everybody else's uh, software management. Instead of having to have per data logging for a bunch of stuff to get all the proper data, it's just gonna log everything. This is where the uniqueness comes in to get it from four to five. Anything that you guys got prior to November will have version four on it. Anything from November on will have a prototype version of five so that you can simply do the updates easier. The only anomaly to that is going to be if you got your drill before um, November and then you got your tank afterwards because then you're going to have everything on your tank at version 5 and your drill is going to have version 4 if they had Packmaster NH3 or blockage in that case you have to do you have to take your monitor back to 4 to do the updates to the ECUs on the drill and then bump it back to 5 which isn't hard but it's still a little inconvenient so anything with version 4, we have to update the ECUs before we can update the software. So to do that, get your software on the stick. You're going to go into the settings on the monitor. You're going to go to implement and then ECU. You're going to go to manage. Make sure your ECUs are communicating. So you've got your ID and your firmware versions. Then you go to upgrade. So you always start off with CM41, and you guys might have found a different way to upgrade procedure that you like better, which is fine. I'm just gonna go through it the way I always do it. So I have CM41, got my ID, and under firmware version, it tells me what firmware versions I have now, and I wanna update it. So I click on there, little box comes up, I've got show version, which it's doing now, upgrade main CPU, upgrade auxiliary CPU, and upgrade both. So each ECU has two sides, a main and a uh, auxiliary on all the CM40s. You can upgrade both. If something goes wrong and it doesn't upgrade both, you may have to do them individually. Um, usually upgrade both works. Hit the checkbox. Now it's red and it says upgrade both. I hit upgrade ECU firmware. It says operation requires restart. Set the checkbox. So the first step just says loading firmware. Hit the yellow arrow. Second step is insert your USB drive if you haven't done so already. Let's put that in. When it finds it, your arrow becomes yellow again. This is all the firmware that's on that USB stick. If you scroll down, you'll find the mongoose files, that's what's actually doing the update. Go next. Now it's going to start. Once I hit this checkbox, it's going to start doing that firmware. So it gets to here, you've got a progress bar here, it starts at zero, it goes to 100. When it gets to around 90%, it's going to start flashing that it's got no communication and the bar jumps around. 
Don't try to stop it, just let it continue. What it's doing at that point is it's actually resetting the ECU so it loses communication and it's just it's communicating, stopping, starting, but you get that error for the last 10%. Um, I'm not going to make you guys watch this because it takes about 10 minutes, so I'm just going to stop it here. Let's pretend it's finished. Um, but I'm going to let it continue with the auxiliary part because that's what it would normally do. So after it gets to 100%, you hit the green checkbox, and then it's going to do the auxiliary side. So what you're going to see here, you're going to see an hourglass with a little blue bar that goes across the screen. This can take anywhere from one to three minutes to do the auxiliary part. And then after it's done the auxiliary, then it's going to turn the monitor off and restart it, which resets the system. Okay, so once your monitor restarts, um, it's going to refresh everything. Anytime that you update an auxiliary, either in a CM40 or any of the EM24 updates, you always have to go to the back of the tractor and break this. This will reset the ECUs. So we've reset the monitor so it accepts it, but we have it to reset the ECUs. So what you do when you unplug this is you completely kill power to everything. And you don't have, all this has to do is pull out back in. You don't have to hold it for any length of time to let them power down. And once you do that, then it allows it to fully synchronize and find your ECU firmwares. To do the other CM40s in the system, so we've got CM42 and 3. So now it's configuring. We'll finish synchronizing here right away. But we don't have to wait for that anyway. So we can just go to select to select the other profiles because every one of these tanks is going to have, or monitors is going to have uh, profiles built into it with the other CM40s. So you hit select. There's going to be an upgrade Packmaster CM43 and an upgrade Tank 5 CM42. So we want to upgrade Tank 5 CM42, select that, hit the checkbox. Operation requires restart, yep. Now it's going to start the monitor and the only ECU that this profile is going to have learned into it is going to be your CM42. That should be done from factory. You shouldn't have to do that one. If you're doing a CM43, the drills and tanks aren't built together. You're gonna have to have all the rest of the ECUs unplugged and then just do this one. But then every time you did an update on four, it's always there. So once the monitor restarts, it's gonna be back in this ECU setup page again. You can just go to manage, make sure they're communicating, go to upgrade, and then just go under firmware versions and just do upgrade both again. Then it just goes through that whole same wizard that we just walked through there. Once you get that one done, it'll do your auxiliary as well. Then go back to select. And if you've got Packmaster, do that CM43, same process. Once you're done all your CM40s, then you can go back to your profile that you had in the monitor select it, hit the checkbox, operation requires restart. So now once we do our EM24s and everything's updated, then we can take the monitor to um, version 5. So monitor's back on, go to upgrade, and if you're doing your EM24s, you don't have main and auxiliary because they're both auxiliary channels, both auxiliary half, so you just always do upgrade both. And when you go through it, same wizard comes up, but it doesn't have that zero to 100. It's just that uh, hourglass with that blue bar going across the bottom. So to upgrade the monitor to version five, we'll go to system, utilities, and it's gonna say provision USB for upgrade. Touch there, confirm, yes. Operation requires restart, so now it's, it's unlocked that firmware. Hit the checkbox, it's going to restart the monitor. And when it comes up, you're going to see the hourglass. And in a few seconds, it should show a little USB stick here. If you don't see the USB stick and it just does the normal startup and it doesn't take very long, then the provision didn't take and just reprovision it and try it again. So I've got my hourglass, my little USB, and I've got a progress bar. 
Depending on what versions of firmware you're going from, if you're going from the oldest version of four, it may take a little bit longer to go to five, but it's typically anywhere from one to three minutes for the upgrade to the monitor itself. So as soon as that little uh, hour or the USB stick disappears, that means the monitor is restarting, and now it's got version five on here. Once it's done the upgrade, you can take that stick out. So the first thing you'll notice when it turns on is the color is different than it used to be. Um, you still got your yes button here and when you come in it's going to be back on that provision screen, the last screen it was on. The first thing you're going to notice when you try to get out of the settings is you no longer have that little running mount on the side to touch to get out of your settings. Now it's a close button right at the top right corner. So you hit that close button and that takes you back to your main screen. So now you've got your main screen, we've got white here. So if you scroll up from the bottom and you hit the auto mode here on the end, you've got a night mode and you've got a day mode. So you got the white and the black and it'll auto automatically switch if you put it to the auto so it switches back and forth. It should make it a lot easier to see at night and during the day. You still have your increase and decrease brightness. Um, they did add, now you can do a screen record so if somebody has a problem going on they can actually record this and then send you that snippet of that recording. Um, you still have your information button there, you touch it, tells you what all the buttons are. So that's what version 5 is to go from 4 to 5.